Okay, so this is going to be about demonic oppression, unclean spirits. There are different ways in which spirits oppress people. Uh, Christians cannot be possessed. But I'm going to read some scripture, put it up on the screen to show both possession, which is uh, demons possessing unbelievers, and then the oppression that comes against believers. Okay, now the, and, uh, the first scripture I'm going to read is in Acts 16, 16 to 18. And it came to pass as we went to prayer, a certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination met us, which brought her masters much gain by soothsaying. The same followed Paul and us and cried, saying, These men are the servants of the Most High God, which show unto us the way of salvation. And this did she many days. But Paul, being grieved, turned and said to the spirit, I command thee in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out the same hour. Now, this makes a point that soothsaying is one of the words here. That's the same thing as witchcraft. And we also see that this is an, uh, a lost person who was possessed. It's not a believer. And, and she also was not somebody that was like a raving lunatic. She was a normal person. And she was not predicting, she was not telling the future. She was a false prophet. She, she was not telling the future because what she was doing was she, she was simply telling people what Paul was doing. So the spirits knew what Paul was doing and they revealed to Paul to reveal to her what what Paul was doing so they weren't she wasn't predicting the future okay now now there's another scripture I want to read here 2 Timothy 2 24 and 26 and a servant of the Lord must not quarrel but be gentle to all able to teach patient in humility correcting those who are in opposition if God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil having been taken captive by him to do his will. Now that this scripture, these verses are making a point that unbelievers have been taken captive by the devil. So all unbelievers need deliverance. You understand that? It's right there. He's taking them captive. They don't even realize it. They all need deliverance. Now, Luke 9, 51 to 55, and this deals with two believers, all right, J James and John specifically, Two believers are following Jesus, they're with Jesus every day for almost three years now, intimacy with, with the one who, who is the creator of everything. And yet they're deceived by an unclean spirit. They're not possessed by an unclean spirit, they're being used by an unclean spirit. It's oppression. And it can't, looks like some speedboats in the background. And it came to pass when a time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face. And they went and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. And they did not receive him because his face was as though he would go to Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw this, they said, Lord, wilt thou that we command fire to come down from heaven and consume them, even as Elias did? But he turned and rebuked them and said, Ye know not what manner of spirit ye are of. So Jesus is rebuking James and John. They have an unclean spirit deceiving them and speaking through them. <laughs> and, and yet they had this intimacy for almost three years with Jesus. And so, so it's not, they weren't possessed again. They were just being oppressed. And so we see that believers are susceptible to uh, unclean spirits. Another scripture verse, and this deals with Paul and what Paul went through. Paul, uh, this scripture deals, this, a lot of people know about this scripture, it deals with the thorn in the flesh. And let me just read the scripture and then I'll elaborate on it. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Now, some people, many believers think that uh, this is oppression of people, because the, the, the words thorn in the flesh can refer back to the Old Testament, where God said to the Israelites, if you don't drive these wicked people out of the land, there'll be thorns in your flesh. Now, I don't believe it's people because, first of all, those, the, those Israelites are being disobedient. Paul is not disobedient here, so he doesn't have, it's not, it's not disobedient people oppressing oppressing disobedient people it's this you know it's Paul being oppressed and Paul 
Paul says he asked for the Lord to take it from him. If somebody's bothering you, you, you don't say, oh, I wish it would leave me. You say, oh, I wish this person would get away from me. No, and so Paul says it. It's like he's speaking about a thing. He wasn't even exactly sure what the demon or unclean spirits looked like. So, and, and it's and the word messenger, messenger of Satan, it can refer to a person. It's translated the word angelos. It's like an angel. Uh, so, but it can refer to a person, but more than likely it refers to an, a spirit being. Okay, and then, and then Paul says, after the Lord says, my grace is sufficient for you, uh, he says, all right, well, I'd rather than glory in my infirmities. So infirmities is translated sickness. He's not glorying in the fact that people are oppressing him. He's glorying in, a, in, in his infirmities. And so a demonic oppression, and it was in his flesh. And so it was more than likely his eyes. And so it was an infirmity and these demons kept on like tormenting and harassing him in this area. So he had some problems there. It's, it's like so clear in scripture. And then we have Paul going on in Ephesians 6. This is, listen to what Paul says about who we wrestle against. Ephesians 6, 11 and 12. Put on the full armor, put on the whole armor of God that ye may stand, may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So Paul is telling us outright right there who we wrestle against. He sees that it's a spiritual battle. He's he's it's the spirit beings that are coming against him, they, that are giving him a hard time. He's not concerned about the oppression of people. He's concerned about the, the real war, okay? Now, and this is Paul, a spirit-filled believer, okay? He's spirit-filled. Because, because some people will say, like, when, the example I used earlier about James and John, who, when a, when a spirit was speaking through them, some would argue, oh, these were not born-again believers. Well, it's true, they weren't born again, but they still had an intimacy with Jesus. But Paul here is a born-again, spirit-filled believer, preaching the gospel, ready to die for Jesus at any moment. Let me read another scripture, 1 Thessalonians 2.18. Wherefore, we, we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, but Satan hindered us. Again and again. So, you know, you know Satan does not need an open door in your life to attack you. Many Christians open doors to the enemy, and that invites demons, but let me tell you, the devil does not need an open door. He will attack you simply because he can't stand you. And so here we got Paul even saying, again and again, Satan is hindering us. Paul's not possessed. He's being oppressed and hindered by unclean spirits. 2 Corinthians 10, 2 Corinthians 2, 10 and 11. Now whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For if indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one for your sakes in the presence of Christ, lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. This speaks clearly about your need to always forgive. If you don't, you're inviting the enemy into your life and he's going to take advantage of you. You know, the Bible says he's like a roaring lion, roaming around seeking whom he may devour. So anybody he can, he will. And if you're not forgiving people, boom, you're a target. Okay. 1 Timothy 5.15, some have in fact already turned away to follow Satan. This speaks of, in the context, Paul's talking about women. And, uh, this, now this applies to men also, but in this context it happens to be dealing with women. And it's, it's, these are women in the church, supposedly spirit-filled Christians, they're turning away and following Satan. Satan has bewitched them and they're following Satan. So it speaks not only of the fact that Satan is is uh, unclean spirits are deceiving and oppressing Christians, but also it speaks of this whole issue of once saved, always saved. These are women in the church, like I said, supposedly spirit-filled Christians, and they're turning away and now following Satan. So it's really, it's right there in scripture, all the scriptures are there. C demons, because a lot of, like, like I said, a lot of Christians seem to think that when, when they're focusing on identity too much, they seem to think that the spirit realm and demons and unclean spirits in the spirit realm don't exist anymore. Or it's like they're not even an issue. It is an issue. You you are, this is not your home. You're in a war zone. So yes, even it does matter that you know who you are in Christ and you walk in obedience and holiness and that keeps, and that gives you the victory over the enemy. But nevertheless, the enemy's always looking for a way to deceive you and get in there and screw things up on you. So you need to be aware that this does exist. All right, and so God bless you. I hope that helps you, and see you next time.